Okay, today I'm going through this important uh, topic on heat and temperature. It's an important uh, PSLE science topic, heavily tested in past year PSLE questions, as well as P5, uh, SA1 and SA2. So those students who are P5 students here, this is also important for your revision. So as you can see, uh, this is a very uh, common apparatus in the science lab, be it in the secondary school or primary school. So there's a metal ball here, and this is the ring. So actually, at normal room temperature, the metal ball can go through the ring just, just neatly. Okay? It can slip through. So they explain why the metal ball can no longer slip through the ring after it is strongly heated. So can you underline this part? Strongly heated. That means it's heated to a high temperature. So we understand that metal is a solid, right? So if we heat it, it will gain heat and expand. So because as it expands, the circumference will exceed, eh, or the diameter will exceed the diameter of this ring. Therefore, you're unable to go through. So for this answer, right, this is how you should write. Okay, when heated, the metal ball, actually you should probably, the, the metal ball gain heat gains heat and expand. Its volume increases, it can no longer fit to the ring. Okay, so you must talk about gain heat and expand. Its volume increases and it can no longer go through the ring. Or you can say its diameter increases, it can no longer go through the ring. Okay, so that is the answer for this part. For part A, I will send to everyone Later, I will screen share. Okay, next to a question, you can see this is actually a laboratory thermometer. Okay, why is it called a laboratory thermometer? Because you can see the minimum reading is you can take is minus 10 and the maximum is 110 degrees Celsius. So you're supposed to write down the reading indicated by the thermometer. So if you increase it, you can see the measurement here. So each, each mark represents one degree Celsius. So if you see carefully, this uh, mercury has not touched 65. It's one marking before 65. Therefore, the answer is 64 degrees Celsius. Oh, 64 degrees Celsius. You've got to write the unit here. So I try to annotate by writing uh, this degree here and C. 64 degrees Celsius. So if we didn't write the unit, you'll get half mark deducted. Okay, next question. Okay, I'm quite surprised that uh, many students in P6 and P5, they do not know what's the name of this thermometer. Okay, if you know, can you kindly type in the chat? so that I understand how many of you know what, yes, Jingxian, correct, JX. So in fact, if, because you sent to everyone, that's why everyone can see your answer. So this is actually called a clinical thermometer. Okay, why is it called a clinical thermometer? Because it's commonly used by the doctor in a clinic. So the spelling is quite straightforward. It's clinical thermometer. Okay, how does this work? Okay, I briefly explained to you. In the past, before the digital thermometer was invented, when Mr. Yu go to see doctor, let's say with a fever, the doctor will tell us to open our mouth and this part, the bulb, right, will be put under our tongue. Okay, because we are warm-blooded, our normal body temperature is about 36.9 to 37 degrees Celsius. So if you have a fever, as in this case, if you see carefully, the temperature recorded is 38.1, this part, okay, 38.1. So this person is running a fever, is a mild fever, not too high, 36.1. Okay, so when you put under your tongue, right, for about one minute, the bark actually will gain heat, causing this liquid inside, is actually mercury, to expand. So as it expands, you can see it's forcing itself to a narrow, tube. This is called the capillary tube. So it will 
stop at a point where it reaches the maximum temperature. Okay, without this constriction, when you remove the thermometer from the patient's mouth, the temperature will drop immediately because usually in a clinic, the air conditioning cools the room to about 24 degrees Celsius or even lower. So they will drop immediately. Therefore, this constriction, it kind of acts like a break to prevent the mercury from returning to lower temperature immediately. So usually this constriction can hold the temperature here for about 10 seconds. So within 10 seconds, the doctor got to take the measurement and this register the final temperature of the patient. So in other words, the function of this constriction, you should write in this manner, which I will showcase to you shortly, okay, is to prevent mercury from returning to the bulb so that maximum body temperature can be read. Okay, so this is the purpose of this, uh, this function. Okay, uh, not to worry because I put that GEP because some questions is a uh, higher order for some questions only, not for the whole paper. Oh, not to worry. Some questions only, I, I term it as a GEP because these are tested at a higher level. Okay, next question. Explain why the bulk of the thermometer has a thin wall. So if you examine here, this part has a thin wall. The reason is very simple. Because if it has a thick wall, the heat from the person cannot be conducted smoothly and quickly to the thermometer. Because I want to take the temperature fast, right? So you can say that to increase the sensitivity, okay, so the answer should be to increase sensitivity in recording the temperature. Okay. To increase sensitivity in recording the temperature. Next. Okay, which of the two thermometers, A or B, could be used to measure the temperature of boiling water? So this is a common sense question. Uh. If you use the clinical, this thing will burst. Uh. Okay, boiling water reaches 100 degrees, right? Right? So you should say A. Okay, thermometer A. So the reason is water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. So only A can have the range, the, the range to measure. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, so only thermometer A can have the range to measure it. Clear? Okay, can. So you take note of this, which I will send to the chat there if some of you need this answer. Okay, previously is this increased sensitivity. Now is this part. Okay, to increase the, okay, this one I will screen share later. Okay, next one, name the parts. So uh, A is a bulb. Okay, this one is the bulb. And B is a capillary tube. Okay, this one, they you may not be tested uh, because this one is a, uh, quite easy naming the parts okay but this one they will ask you to indicate uh, the freezing point so you are supposed to mark here the freezing point okay so i will screen share to you uh, this part uh, shortly to make you see the answer here okay let me screen share this uh. so in your answer you should indicate the uh, this part is A because it's zero degrees Celsius. Understand? So this part, zero degrees Celsius. Okay. And this part, body temperature, so you indicate around 36 or 37. So you have to label part 
two and part one. Okay, there's two. Okay. Yeah. This is a liquid. So there's a A is a bulb, B is a capillary tube. Okay, let me go back to the question. Okay, next slide. So done already. Suggest, okay, suggest why mercury and not water is used in the liquid ink glass thermometer. Okay, liquid ink glass thermometer meaning like this one. Why water is not used? Okay, firstly, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, right? So it cannot be used. But more importantly, because, right, mercury is a good conductor of heat. But water is a poor conductor of heat. Okay, so that's the reason for that. Okay, let me change to this part. So for this answer, so you write, mercury is a good conductor of heat, but water is a poor conductor of heat. Okay, next, compare the liquid in glass clinical thermometer and the digital clinical thermometer, which would you choose to measure body's temperature? Okay, explain the reason for your answer. Okay, this one, there are two possible answers. So they are asking you, you see this type, right? The clinical thermometer. Okay, nowadays you could hardly find this type of thermometer because nowadays people want to use the digital one. It's more convenient and it's safer. Okay, but this one got one advantage. They do not need battery to be operated. <laughs> Okay. And it's actually more accurate compared to the digital. So for this answer, uh, there are two possible answers which I share with you. If you choose, this one don't have yes or no. As long as your reasons are correct, you'll be given the marks. So these are the possible answers. Let me enlarge it so that you can see. Okay, there are two possible answers here. Okay, so you can say that the, the liquid clinical thermometer is, is more accurate. Okay. But the digital, digital thermometer is more convenient and safer. So either, either answers are, are accepted. Okay. Either answers are accepted. Okay, let's continue. Okay, this one you do take note. This sort of question is called a bimetallic strip. So you need to familiarize with your vocabulary, uh, science vocabulary. What is a bimetallic? So the word bi means two, okay, like binoculars, two. Okay, bi anno, once every two years. So this is at a normal temperature, both the brass strip and the iron strip are of the same length. So when heated, this is what will result. So they are asked you to explain why the bimetallic strip takes the shape as shown in diagram B when it is heated. Okay, this one you got to be very sure that uh, this property of brass and iron, uh, because they are both metals, but because different metals expand at different rates. So you should you can say that actually from here, right? You notice a uh, brass actually. Is longer, right? Just like the running track. So you observe if you run on this track, right? You run a longer distance than the inner track. So from here, you can gauge that the, the, the length of expansion for brass uh, is more than iron. So this is what you should can say because they ask you to explain why this happened, right? So you say that a uh, brass expands more than iron when heated. And then you can go and say by saying different metals have different rates of expansion when heated. Okay, the same is also true when the matter is being cooled. So you can see in, in the next question below, right? 
So they say from diagram A, which method expand more? So this one already answered in part A, so it's brass. Okay. Then they say draw in this diagram to show how the bimetallic strip would look like if it is cooled to below room temperature. So this is room temperature is flat, okay. both same, same length. So below room temperature, it should bend the other way. Okay. So your answer should be this, as shown here. Okay. You should bend this way. So now in this situation, brass contract more than iron. So can you see now iron right, is on the outer track? Brass is in the inner track. That means brass is shorter, right? So brass contracts more than iron when it's being cooled. So you draw this diagram. And then uh, they ask you, give example. Give example. Give two examples of devices, means things that you use uh, that make use of bimetallic strip to work. So a common example, I believe every one of you have this at home, the electric iron, and also you have air conditioning, right? Yeah. So these are the two devices that makes use of the bimetallic strip. Okay, due to the time constraint, I won't show you the YouTube video for this one, but you can at your own free time, you key in bimetallic strip in electric iron. You can see how it works. Or bimetallic strip in aircon. Okay, the other types of uh, devices uh, includes your oven. Okay, any actually any heating or cooling devices, uh, they commonly use bimetallic strip. Okay, so the other one it can be the the oven. Okay, or you think of anything that uses heating and cooling. Okay, even uh, you know the fire alarm. The fire alarm also uses this. Okay, because when you when the bimetallic strip is being heated, uh, it will bend towards a certain angle and it will form a closed circuit to trigger the alarm. Okay, the fire alarm. So besides the electric iron, air conditioner, your oven, fire alarm, etc. Okay. Okay, now uh, this last question, then I will end this part. Okay, this is called a revert. Uh, because some students, they are not aware what, what is revert. Okay, revert is like a type of screw. They can fit through this hole in the metal plate uh, neatly. But you see on the other end, this part protrudes out. So when they are joined together in part B, they use a special hammer to flatten this. Okay, because uh, this part, which is not shown here, is actually is heated. Usually they heat in a furnace and then they place here uh, for it to be softened. So for here, right, you just give me a second. I will extract a interesting video to show you this part. Okay, so now you take a look at this uh, riveting, then you appreciate what this means. Okay, so you observe uh, this part because it's heated at a high temperature, uh, just below its melting point. So this metal is actually quite soft. And they use a high pressure hammer, uh, being mechanically controlled, right, to flatten it. So as you observe, uh, later you can see some uh, smoke rising up because it's, it's red hot. Okay, riveting is used to join two pieces of metal permanently, uh, especially in the building and construction industry. You see, there's smoke coming out. Uh, it's very hot. So 
So normally after this, uh, the next process is when they have finished riveting, right? They will cool the cool the metal because when you cool it, right, the hot rivet, right, on both ends uh, will sandwich the two metal plates or two metal sheets closer together. So I will show you this part. Let's come back to the question of the uh, question we are discussing. Okay, so the first part I did for you, the river is heated and placed through the holes of the two metals. So these two parts, right, I asked you to complete it. So you notice the pointed ends, right? The pointed end of the river is hammered flat to form the river heads. So for this part, this is what you can write. Okay. The pointed ends of the rivet is hammered flat. Okay. To form the rivet heads. Okay. This part. And finally, when cooled, the rivets contract and pull the metal plates together. So this part is when cooled, okay. when cooled, the rivets contract and pulls the two metal plates tightly. So take note of this. I'll do a save here. And then I've gone through uh, this paper with you. This end of the first part. Okay, I'll let you sometimes copy down. So I've ended this first section for you to record. <clears throat> 